This is a rant on Okihime. This will be anti, by the way, so I advise you to not listen any further if you are pro this pairing. Okay, here I go. I hate this pairing a lot. I despise it utterly. The fans haven't exactly made me want to like the pairing. Um, but that aside, I hate the pairing in general. Even if the fans weren't as bad as they were, I still think that I would hate the pairing the way I do. Um, it just makes something out of nothing. Orihime and Ukiyora both gained something from each other in that he learned more about humans and she in turn learned more about Oikomundo and the Arankars and it both helped them to grow and develop as individuals. That much is certain. But love? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, in my eyes, their bond wasn't even friendship. That is, if there was a bond in the first place, which I think there wasn't really. To be honest, this is what it boils down to. She's the prisoner, and he's her guard. It's as simple as that, and the only reason why he stuck around her was orders. Had Aizen not ordered him to watch over her, he wouldn't have done so. It's as simple as that, and he even implied that he would run her through long ago had Aizen wished it. But as Aizen hadn't, Ukiora had left Orihime untouched. I mean, the fact that he said if he crushed her skull or cut open her chest to see the heart. I mean, yes, those could be taken metaphorically, but I would not have put it past him at that point to actually carry out those acts. Definitely. I mean, Orihime was so miserable around Ukiora. He never once made her happy. And he never once showed happiness around her. Okay, he's a hollow and doesn't have a heart and is soulless, yes. But even in the Wakamunda arc, most Arankars exhibit some kind of emotion. But Ukiora is different in that respect. I mean, he, repre he represents nihilism. You can't get any further um, from extroverted than that. You really can't. Um, what really annoys me is when Ukiora and Orihime are made out to be interested in each other and that there was sexual tension between them and apparently when Orihime slapped Ukiora that's said to be sexual tension or unresolved sexual tension and that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's, that's just ridiculous. That's fans, that's fans letting their um, fantasies run away with them. Really, they're getting too carried away. There was nothing there in the first place. She was simply angry at him. He made her angry. Orihime rarely loses her temper. I mean, I think that's the first time we ever saw her do that. And people say that's a sign of resolve. Oh no, oh no, no, no. That's, that's Orihime being rattled. I mean, the fact that Ukiora pushed Orihime to that is, is terrible, really. She's such a gentle, kind, and caring individual. Usually she wouldn't do such a thing. But Ulkiora had obviously pushed her so much that she just couldn't take it anymore. And, well, she took it out on him. So that's nothing to do with resolve there. In fact, Orihime's resolve not to break under him was admirable. Um, Oikamundo really brought out that side of Orihime. People say she has no resolve. Oh, trust me, she has tons of it. If she had no resolve, then many of the people she healed and saved from death would have died long ago because her powers are linked to her resolve and to her heart and her mindset. If her mindset is shattered, her, her powers will not work. Um, although there are occasions where they won't work anyway because the enemy is too powerful or the wound is too serious and she cannot reject it because she's never come across it before or her powers lack the ability to do so. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has limitations. Anyway, I don't understand how people can say that Orihime would love somebody who messed her up mentally and broke her until she hit rock bottom. I see no logic in that. And you know what? Even when he did that, she still tried to treat him like a normal human. I mean, Unmasked is a very good example of that. Um, she even pinned the suffix kun 
to his name, which um, is used in a variety of situations in Japan. In this, in this case, it's used when females are referring to their friends, their comrades who are male, or even their co-workers. So she was treating him like a normal human. I mean, the fact that even after all he did to her, she was trying to still reach out to him and treat him with kindness is amazing. I guess most people by now would have ended up hating him and so on, but no, she never ever bore a grudge against Ukiora, and that's amazing. It really is. And no, Ukiora did not make her stronger. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Because if he did, why the heck did he break her the way he did when he killed Ichigo, huh? If, if that was his way of strengthening her, that's a funny way of doing it, don't you think? It's a rather sadistic way too. How cruel is that? And also saying that saying that she should have given up on her friends long ago and that they're dead and not to bother hoping. I mean, that's just that's terrible. And the fact that Orihime weathered the storm is incredible. So if anyone says Orihime is weak, oh I dare you to read um Wake Mundo again. I dare you to read that. Because she is strong. She always has been always and everybody breaks it's part of being human and guess what ukiura never broke did he because he's a hollow he has no heart this is why i'm against ukihime i i despise it so much because of what this pairing does to these two characters because the characterization of ukiura and orihime at least in the way the pairing makes them out to be it's wrong it's totally wrong and it's a, it's a very stark contrast to canon. I mean, how could Ukiura love somebody like, a, like Orihime, who's a human, who's a captive, no less, that he does not want to know, or that, and that he does not know? She is nothing more than a tool. You know, he has a duty of care to her, but that's because he's been ordered to. Otherwise, he would care less for her. And she's just merely a bother to him. Don't get me wrong, Orihime is my favourite character in Bleach, and I think Ukiora was a very well-developed bad guy, but seriously. These two are great on their own, but put them together and it's so screwed up and dysfunctional, it's not even funny. Orihime can definitely do better than a relationship with Ukiora, and I, can't, I cannot believe that some of her so-called true fans reckon that she would be perfect for him. What kind of a fan are you? If you think someone like her would benefit from the kind of dynamic she had with him, especially around the time he kidnapped her and he was fighting Ichigo on the dome. That's just cruel. She needs somebody who is strong, but also kind and caring and who understands her. Not someone with no heart and breaks her in more ways than one. Not someone who murders the one she loves right before her eyes. Not someone who scars her mentally and emotionally. Ukiura can do so much better than her too since to him, Orihime is far from a potential in love interest. He does not help her situation one bit, nor does he want to. In fact, one of the only characters he does give a damn about is Aizen. He is his leader after all. So he does things for that man instead of her, by following what it is that he is asked to do and nothing more. How people think that he treats Orihime as something special is beyond me. He even said himself that because Aizen had not ordered him to kill her, she was still alive, as I said before. It's blatantly obvious that he, she would have, he would have run her through a long time ago, if it had not been for that. Canon Okiura versus Okihime Okiura would be something to behold indeed. Furthermore, poor Orihime gets bashed whenever she isn't with Okiura. It seems Okihime Oki fans only like her as a character for who she is paired with. They don't appreciate every facet of her nature, including the fact that she's already in love with the main character. And as I said before, they even ridicule some of her, some of her, some of the elements of her nature, like how she can't heal certain people, and they say she's weak. If they were true Orihime fans, they would respect every part of her nature, even if parts of her nature annoyed them. So they are not true fans. And how shallow is it just to like Orihime for the way she acts around Okiora? That's just that one side. And then you say she's weak for being with somebody else. Even if the dynamic between her and that someone else is merely that of comrades or friends. 
I just, I can't fathom that. I really cannot, nor do I want to, because I think it's wrong, honestly. Even now, she gets stick for being who she is, and for even not thinking about her so-called love, Ukiora. It's ridiculous. Orihime fans my ass. I bet that even in undeniable proof that Orihime still loves somebody else, Okihime fans would say that her happiness around Ichigo is a facade. Because inside she's actually pining after Ukiora and blaming herself that he became dust on the wind. Some people were even saying that, back when Mayuri was in Wakamundo, that he would collect up um, Ukiora's ashes. But hang on, what ashes? He fitted into nothing! And apparently he would take them to Orihime after being unsuccessful in trying to re retrieve the Espada and um, revive the Espada. Ridiculous. Because he never did, did he? And Ukiora stayed dead. Wow. It is clear to me that Orihime has recovered from her deal ordeals in Wakamundo. So this claim about her secretly mourning over Okiora is just utter BS. Not to mention the fact that the possibility of Mayuri gathering up the remains, which... Um, which is completely impossible as they are none, is just ludicrous. Also, I was thinking about the scene where Okiora was fading into nothing and that he talked to Orihime, well, when he talked to Orihime um, recently, and I realised something. He started frittering into nothingness when he agreed to severing Ichigo's limbs for a rematch. We all know that. Then he talked to Orihime, and during that conversation, he reached his hand out to her. If you look at the panel in question, you'll see that that was starting to disintegrate too. However, the moment she was about to touch his fingers, th the disintegration suddenly sped up, and he vanished almost within an instant, and he became dust swept by the wind. Don't you think it's a bit fishy? Why would he be gradually fading from existence one moment, and then completely frittering away the next? It's almost like, through that simple gesture, he ex she accelerated his demise. Now wouldn't that be something? The person who Okihime is clinging to to bring U Okiora back is the one who actually dealt the final blow. It's just, this is just, just precious, not to mention ironic. Besides, it has been said in the manga that Orihime can reverse any event that occurred with her powers. She could have rejected the event of Okiora's death right there and then had she really wanted to, but she didn't. So much for long lost loves reuniting, eh? Kubo showed us through Okiora's reactions with Orihime, that this pairing would not work. I mean, come on, you know you're doing it wrong when you use the deaths of friends as a pickup line. <laughs> well, a joke anyway. <clears throat> In fact, it doesn't even deserve to be called a pairing, must much less a bond. Yes, Orihime helped him to learn more about human nature, human nature, but that was it. That was his redemption, so to speak. Like Tosin's. Brief but final. Neither of those villains are coming back anyway. Another claim people like to, to make about Okihime, those who are in favour of the pairing, um, is about the heart. Now, in my personal opinion, these people take the heart too literally. It's a metaphorical device, a metaphorical literary device used in the mangas, in, used in the work, used in the work, because, at least in the manga, it represents bonds, carrying on wills, of people who died or people who left you, etc., etc. It's the heart is born per Cayenne when somebody cares about somebody else and when these two people care mutually about each other. Now, people, the heart in Western terms is often referred to romantically, but you should not let this get in the way of your interpretation of the heart in the manga because the heart, at least in this manga, can represent various things. Now, as you all know, love comes in various forms. You've got friendship, comradeship, familial affection, you've got teacher-student bonds, you've got sibling love, soulmate love, platonic love, and yes, romantic love, but there are so many more loves out there that could define bonds, you see? So it does not mean that just because Okiora knew about the heart from Orihime, just because of that, it doesn't mean that he was in love with her. No. It does not mean that. At all. They were together to, for a too short a time. And not just that, he never confessed to her. And she never confessed to him. They never kissed, they never hugged. There, were, there wasn't any... There was not any demonstration at all of undeniable romantic love. There really isn't.